Hey guys, Tech Timmy here. So I just took my new George Foreman indoor outdoor electric grill out of the box. And when I saw all the parts, I started feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So I decided to create a separate unboxing and also assembly video. So this is part two, this is the assembly piece. And after reviewing the instructions, it's really not that bad. So I would say when, when you start taking this thing out of the box, if you start to feel a little, a little intimidated, I think we're gonna get through this just fine. And hopefully this video helps you to get yours set up. But so I'm gonna toss the box aside for now because I already took everything out. And I have a little bit of a different rig set up here for my camera to try and show you guys kind of all the parts at the same time. And the instructions are here. So you, it ships with this giant instruction book. Most of it is just translated into different languages. There's some care and cleaning instructions using indoors you know, tips and tricks, and you have a cooking cooking guide and so forth, and even some recipes. And the Asian barbecue beef kebabs look delicious. So we're gonna try those at some point, but the assembly instructions are all here on a single page, and there's nine steps in total, so not terrible. And there are a number of parts here, but it seems very straightforward. So I'm going to walk through step by step and if I miss, take missteps along the way, I will fast forward through that in the video and or edit it out so that I don't bore you guys to death. But we're gonna, this is my, my first time with this product, my first time assembling, so we're gonna get through it as best we can here. So the first thing we need to do is put the readers on so we can see the instructions. And here we go. So assemble pedestal tube by connecting two halves of the tube. Insert the tapered end of the upper pedestal tube onto the top of the lower pedestal tube and screw the tubes together. Okay, now if you are a bit daft like me and you want to know what all of the different parts are, here you go. So fifth, number 15 and 16 are the upper pedestal tube and lower pedestal tube. So let's see what that looks like. And <laughs> okay, yeah. So I, I know just because the only thing that looks like a tube is that, it's got to be that, but for whatever reason, they didn't include those on the call out. So that's kind of lame, but all right. So back to the instructions. Let's, let's look and see if we can figure out what the pedestal tube is. So here's the cover, which I love the red. It's kind of, you know, kind of classy looking. And then, so we have two pedestal tubes here, which is the gut. Absolutely has to be these guys, right? Okay, so now already, did I bury the instructions under the hood? Let's see. Indeed. There they are. All right, so let's get let's get the instructions back in play here. And it says, assemble pedestal tube by connecting the two halves. Insert the tapered end of the upper pedestal tube into the top of the lower pedestal tube and screw the tubes together. Okay, so I'm thinking tapered end and maybe it's the other way. Yeah, so this, well, mm, tapered end of the upper, yeah. That's it, so it does. Initially, I thought it wasn't going to be machine tight, but it does. So you wanna make sure you screw that in tight so you don't have any loosey-goosey stuff going on there. And then this guy, I think is a clip. This is gonna, I'll bet that is for latching onto a different part, but let's proceed to step number two. So step one of nine done. So step two, insert pedestal feet into pedestal base until they click into place. Place pedestal base on a flat level surface. Let's see if they included this one in the call of the documentation. And indeed, so number seven is the pedestal base part. So that's the bottom. And number eight, pedestal feet. Okay, so that, this is the, the base of the grill. So we're going to go, yeah, to me, it looks like a pedestal base right there, doesn't it? Okay, so now we're gonna take these guys and presumably these are gonna click in there. And you wanna make sure you don't click your fingers in there too. Right? Yeah, well, they don't really click, but they do fit. They do fit to fit in there in pretty solidly. So let's go for number two. I'm gonna stick that guy in here like so. And I'm told that this is super stable when you when placed on a on a on a flat surface outside. You want to certainly place this on a flat surface though, not a hill or what have you. And if you're in a windy area, I would suggest securing this as best you can. I live on the ocean here and sometimes we get some pretty interesting sea breezes 
My understanding there's also a cover that you can buy for this that come, that you can buy for this separately. I'm going to do that. I will actually also leave a link to the grill itself in the description down below, and I think I'll see if I can scare up the cover as well. So we'll put that down there. I am I plan to buy the cover for this for sure. Don't want it sitting out in the rain. So that's what the pedestal base looks like when it's all assembled. Very cool. And next, back to step three. Insert the slotted end of assembled pedestal tube into center hole of pedestal base and push down firmly. Okay, so I'm gonna get the grilling element out of my way here for a minute. And yeah, I may need to switch this to the floor. Back to our lovely document. I put the document under the grilling element over here. All right, so next up we have step three. So is that turned click in place? Let me see. Yeah, no, it's just, it sits in there pretty solid. Should be fine. All right, so that's that. Insert pedestal feet into the over. Insert slotted end of assembled pedestal tube into center hold pedestal base. Push down firmly, yeah. So, we, so we've done that. We push down extra firmly actually. Now place bill gr gr grill base on top of pedestal tube assembly. Grill base on top of, ensuring the hole in center of grill base engages with tube. Okay. So I believe, and I am gonna move this to the floor, so let's do that right now. Put that right there. So here's what we want to do. We want to make sure that this guy is down like that. And then I believe, yep. So you need to twist it a little bit until it engages with the thing, right? And then that clip is what secures it in place. And you know what, for sake of trial and error here, let's just make sure this doesn't just go in there. It's not, okay. So fairly secure, it does have a little bit of wiggle to it, which I don't love, but so maybe there's a, in one of the future steps, it'll, it'll help out with that. So hold on, let's go to the next one here. So this is low to the ground. So if you have back issues, as I do, but you wanna know that right up front, that this is it, you're gonna have to be, you're gonna be doing some bending over. Or if I have a fairly solid outdoor table, I might be tempted to actually set this up on there. Just be careful, and you want to make sure that that base is 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 all the way on the table. You don't want to hang it off, and for potential to have to have it have it come crashing down on you, especially when it's hot. <laughs> okay, so next we have okay. Place drip tray securely into position inside grill base. So I'm going to go back to the photo here. Securely into position inside grill base. Okay, and I think, you know what, because it is so low to the ground, I'm going to lift it back up on the table right now. So it does say inside the drip tray there that it's dishwasher safe, which is cool. So you can throw that right, right in the dishwasher. I would suggest emptying out any grease first in a tin can. And then I think what we do is freeze it here so we don't want to pour the grease down the drain. So you can freeze it and then dispose of it properly. Now, the drip tray, it looks like, is gonna go in the center of the grill here. Yeah, there's a little, okay, so right inside, I'm gonna drop this down. Right inside, there's a little lip here where I'm sticking the tray. So, let's see if I can angle this. Yeah, this this is this is was an interesting place to have this guy. So it just goes there and you push it right in, and that's it. I believe it just does it go any further than that? It doesn't seem to. It's, yeah, it looks like there's a little clampy thing on the right side that you need to press down on. And no, it just it just sits right in there like that. Okay. If you own this, or or and you and you 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 figured out another way to install that, drop me a comment down below. 
that, that would be great. And then let me just see here. The next step in the process. Okay, press drip tray securely into position inside grill base. And look, it does it does stick out a little bit, so, so I, I believe that's correct. Okay, rotate grill base until the rotate grill base until notch on the bottom of the grill plate is aligned with the slot in the upper pedestal base. Oh boy. Okay. Notch on the bottom of the grill plate is aligned with the slot in the upper pedestal tube. Okay, so it's asking us to rotate this. I, I feel like we've done this already. So I'm rotating. Align with the slot in the upper pedestal tube, huh? Okay. So we're basically securing, you look, I'm guessing we're tightening this into the base. And I'm gonna go around 360 degrees and I believe that's what we need to do. Indeed, that's it. That's that's as tight as she's gonna go. Super tight, actually. Okay, cool. And then the final step here. Well, I'm not gonna guess. We're gonna go back to the our trusty instructions here. So the final step is to. We have a few more steps. So position probe receptacle through probe cutout in top side of grill base. Probe. Receptacle. I, if, if this isn't a probe, I don't know what is. <laughs> Definitely don't want, don't want to probe anyone with that thing, though. That's for sure. All right, so now let's go and see where the probe receptacle fits. All right, we're going to go back to our lovely diagram. Probe receptacle, huh? Is number 10. Okay, so it's on the right-hand side with the, with the grill facing us. And it looks like it's just gonna, it's gonna connect in there somehow. And so this is the probe receptacle. And I'm gonna bring this on the camera right around here so you guys can see what it is I'm doing. Actually, let's turn this guy that way. And it looks like, is it there? Oh, I see, interesting, okay. So, <laughs> it, so this notch here just goes in there and so there's the probe itself goes in the center and it's got two other probes attached to the grill that are gonna f f fall into those slots right there. So if you guys can see this clearly, I think you can, good. Okay, so then this guy just fits in like that, nice and snug and that's our, our volume control, if you will, for the, for the heat, very cool. And then the cord is six feet long, which is ample cord, I am probably going to use an extension with this because I'm, I'm going to be attaching it to my outdoor my outdoor power source and then portable power source and then this guy so it looks like there's a little plasticky thing on the end of the plug so we're going to cut that off got my trusty scissors here yeah and i should have started with this but i guess you really all that you need is a pair of scissors and a screwdriver and a phillips head screwdriver to get this together so i have my trusty phillips head screwdriver here and then the final step in the process is to attach the, the, this guy onto the cover using the screwdriver. So I'm going to, we're going to put, take the grill down. It's, it's too cold. It's nice and light. It's, just, it's not heavy at all. But I think two things with this grill, two caveats, I'd say. First one is, as I mentioned, it's low to the ground, very low to the ground. So for anyone with a bad back, you need to know you're going to be bending over. And the second thing is the surface area is less than I was expecting. I think there's a, actually I actually know, there's a larger model, there's a rounder one that would be more prudent. But like this one, the complaint is that, is that it's also too low to the ground. So there's the cover. 
Now I have the grill sitting on the floor here, so I'm going to just position the camera there so you can see what it looks like all together. And ta-da! So the, <laughs> there's the, the final product, the finished product, the George Foreman Indoor Outdoor Electric Grill. I will try and fast forward through some of the more painful moments in this video and through the magic of editing, hopefully I can, I can turn this into a coherent step-by-step -step procedure for you guys. But that's what it looks like. I, 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 it's very, very nice looking. It's just low. So, and I, I think I'll stop saying that at this point, but I would, if you want a heads up about this, that's, that is what, what I'm telling you, it's low to the ground. I'm looking forward to getting this set up and getting it outside and using it. I will do maybe a six week update after I use it and we grill, grill, grill out several times, maybe in three weeks. I, I, I do plan to use this quite a bit this summer. And I'm trying to think of a way to get this up higher off the ground. And I think maybe I'll, I'll actually buy a special table for this so that, I, so that I don't have to bend over. But that's it in a nutshell. So if you got any value from this video, if you wouldn't mind, give me a quick thumbs up. It helps out the channel a lot. And please subscribe for a fun take on all things tech. I do all manner of tech videos, including smart home stuff, stuff about Amazon Echoes and, and ALEXA products. And yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, please subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.